All right, guys, so welcome back. Uh, you guys did a great job there hitting that like button uh, on the last video. So today we're going to be uh, making what I consider the ultimate adjustable uh, catfishing jug. So I just want to thank everybody who hit that like button. Uh, if you would, take a moment, hit that like button right now for this video. If you guys like these type of videos, if you like catfishing, things like that, uh, it's free, doesn't take a, but a second, and uh, you know, it really helps me out. So I really appreciate the support and the comments and everything. So we're going to jump right into this here, and we're going to, uh, to make this video here for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a adjustable... Um, catfish jug basically and the adjustability comes in the fact that you can adjust the the weight as well as the depth setting uh, which is very convenient because you know a lot of times uh, with jug fishing uh, the depth that you run is quite critical in the fact that you know how many fish you catch at the end of the day so I've got a couple examples here for you so these are a couple of jugs that I just picked up that were abandoned on the lake this is your very typical jug here uh, it's a noodle with a piece of pipe in it. It's got some twisted line on it with a weight and a hook, and it's roughly two foot long or so. This thing's fine if you're fishing in water that's, you know, a foot deeper than this line. Um, other than that, you know, for the most part, your catfish are going to be just barely off the bottom. That's how I like to run my jugs, a ride around a foot, 10 inches off the bottom. Uh, that way you're not dragging through the bottom, collecting debris. Catfish will definitely come up to feed. Uh, but you definitely up your rate if you are fishing right in that zone. There's a, this is the problem with this. So that's a homemade job. Um, not crazy about it. This is more of a commercially available one that I found. This is a just a jug here. Um, a little handle on it and a place to tie some, some line. Uh, once again, whoever did this, they, they were running about a foot deep or so. Uh, so you're missing a lot of the water column. No adjustability in it. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how I use my, how I make mine here. They're super easy. Um, all the materials here are very inexpensive. You can make these things for under a dollar a piece total. So if you can run 25 jugs in your state, you can go out for $25 and have 25 hooks in the water. Uh, very very effective economical way these things aren't crazy expensive to make the way I'm going to show you you can spend tons of money if you want to or you can spend very minimal money um, but in the end it's all about catching fish right so anyway so what we're going to use is a standard pool noodle a uh, standard pool noodle has a, a hole in it that's roughly 15 16 to 1 inch so we're going to use pipe uh, to make our dropper with and we're going to use 3 quarter inch Schedule 40, that's three quarter inch ID. So three quarter inch has roughly, uh, you know, has a one inch OD, which fits very nice into this, uh, this pool noodle. So where you can glue it and it's, uh, you know, very secure. So just watch that if you're going out and buying these things. You know, this is a couple bucks for a piece of this. You don't need Schedule 80. Uh, and this pool noodle, hell, if you buy them in the winter time, you can get them for a dollar a piece. So, so nothing, you know. All right, so here's where we break it down as far as cost. Um, pool noodles are 50 inches long, the average ones, and we've got a 10-foot stick of pipe. So if we cut these 12 and a half inches long, we get four jugs out of one pool noodle. If we cut this uh, pipe here a foot long, we get 10 jugs out of one piece of pipe. So if you buy five noodles and two pieces of pipe, you can get 20 jugs. Uh, you know, so it's super affordable. The next thing we're going to use is uh, we're going to have some screw eyes. These things comes in pack of these things come in packs of ten. So once again, no waste. This whole project is you know where you can make a number of jugs with minimal waste. These are nothing more than a screw eye uh, with kind of a lag type bolt on the end of it. We're going to run that into our PVC pipe. These things are crazy cheap too. Uh, swivels. You don't need a fancy swivel. These are you can get these for like a dollar and a half. Uh, I use size three because it's got a bigger opening in it. You just want an eye opening big enough to run your line through it. Um, and then we're gonna use whatever hook. Now I don't want to say a whole lot about hooks because I know that's opening a can of worms, literally. But I will tell you what I use. Um, I run a four to five aught circle hook on my jug lines. Now. 
for the most part, you're jug fishing, you're fishing for eaters, you know, that five to seven pound range, uh, as well as, you know, if you want to go after your fiddlers. Uh, and a, a four to five out hook will do the job just fine. I use circle hooks because a circle hook is more or less designed to kind of set itself um, as opposed to your J hook or a treble hook or a kale hook. Um, I, I just prefer it, right? You can use a bigger hook, no problem. Um, but I also want, you know, I want the fish to come up, eat the bait, and pull down as you know quickly as possible without taking a lot of time to do it, and and get that hook in his mouth. And so that's why I use just a little smaller hook. If I'm drifting, uh, you know, I, I I run like eight out hooks, uh, and I still catch small fish on them. But you know, four to five out hook is a is a great choice for a jug line. And like I said, I'm a firm believer in circle hooks. So that brings us to basically. Um, you know everything but the line to finish this up with now this line here and i want to talk about this because i see a lot of people using twisted mason line and that's what's on the two jugs that i showed you before twisted mason line is is not the line that you want to use really for for jug lines because you have to singe it or it unravels real bad um it's just it it balls up if you don't have a swivel on it so get Go to the store and uh, you know spend a couple extra dollars on a roll of braided mason line. Um, normally, the braided mason line has a lot higher breaking strength anyway, uh, in the same small diameter. As well as this stuff here will not unravel on you because it's braided. Um, there's no need to singe this stuff, so it takes out a whole step. Uh, your jugs will last for uh, a lot longer. These jugs here, I've been running you know some of these for five six years, you know, and I've still got no problems out of them. So anyway, I really uh, would push you towards the braided mason line. I'll leave links to all this stuff down below. There'll be Amazon links, but just so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Next, we'll talk about the glue that I'm gonna use. So I use glue on uh, to glue the noodle to the pipe. There's gonna be guys out there that say you need to, to hard fasten it. I can tell you I've ran these for a lot of years. I have ever only lost one uh, I've ever only had one malfunction. I had one noodle that got stuck in a fork of a tree with a fish on it. He pulled the pipe out. But I can tell you I've caught hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of fish by gluing the, the pipe to the noodle. If you use a, a, like a medium body PVC cement or a rubber contact cement and you coat that whole pipe, what I'm gonna show you is you're gonna have like 35 square inches of coverage into that noodle. You, you can't pull that out. Um, once it sets so anyway like i said i'll show you guys how to hard fasten them too because i know there'll be people uh you know that want to see that but definitely if you don't want to there's no reason i don't really hard fasten them simply because i don't like that sharp edge but anyway it, it's you know one or the other all right so let's get to building this thing here real quick this is super simple i'll, I'll just demonstrate for you guys so as i said before these pool noodles we're, we're breaking them down in evenly. So a 50 inch pool noodle, I'm like got a mark here at 12 and a half inches. So we'll just cut this. You can cut it however you want. My portable bandsaw does an excellent job. Makes real quick work of, of that. And our pipe here, we're gonna cut at one foot. All right, so that's real easy. We're done with that. So we've got our two sections here. So next we're gonna mark out this pipe for all our holes that we need to be drilled. So real simple here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up two inches on this pipe and I'm gonna make a mark. And then I'm gonna come up three quarter inches and I'm gonna make another mark. And I'm gonna spin it 180. And I'm gonna make a, another mark at about half inch three-eighths, somewhere right in there. We got three marks on our pipe here. All right, so let's assemble this thing here. So I'm gonna take just a very small bit here, 16th inch or so. We're gonna drill a pilot hole for our screw eye, and we're gonna do that at our three-quarter inch mark. So just give ourselves a little pilot hole. Next, I'm gonna come and I'll throw like an eighth inch bit in here and I'm gonna put a hole here at my half inch mark, and that's what our, our actual dropper line is gonna attach to. All right, so next, 
let's take a, uh, a screw eye. These screw eyes have about a quarter inch eye in them. That's really all that's concerning me whenever I buy these. Um, so we'll just take that and we'll get that started in our three quarter mark. And once you get it started, if you take a nail or an awl or something and, and run it in there, uh, it helps a little bit there. We're gonna leave that in that manner, perpendicular to the pipe. Now, if you want to, you can add a drop of super glue to that to keep it from spinning. They usually don't spin once they set because there's not a lot of pressure on them. All right, so next, let's take, before we glue this up, and we'll take some line. Now, line, the length of your dropper line is completely dependent on the lakes that you fish. So we, our lakes around here are very shallow, really, you know. So 10 to 12 foot is kind of an average for, uh, for our lakes. They just, our lakes just aren't that deep. So I normally run about a 10 foot dropper just so I can cover all the water. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I've got a 10 foot piece of my mason line here. I'm just going to run that through and through our half inch hole here and tie it off. Now you guys can use whatever knot that you prefer. I prefer the three loop knot. It's kind of made for heavy mono um, and basically what it is, run your line through, leave you a little slack, loop it around it three times, make that loop and then come back in and run your tag in back around and then pull it back out through. You're essentially making like a three loop slip knot on this. Um, you can use whatever knot that you prefer, but you know, these work great for, you know, your heavier, heavier lines. It's the same line that I use whenever I, I run, uh, you know, for like musky leaders or, you know, big leaders for catfish. All right, so we've got that tied on here. Now let's come down to our end of our dropper and we'll tie our barrel swivel on. So we've got a number three barrel swivel. It's got roughly a quarter inch eye. It's just easy to get the string through. I highly recommend a swivel on a jug line. It'll save your jug line. Um, and we'll do the same three loop knot here. Nothing very complicated about that. Once you get good at these, you can leave really, really short tag ends uh, by doing this. Three loop knot there. Now we'll come to our dropper line. So I like to run, you know, roughly a nine, 10 inch dropper. You don't want a huge dropper because I put my weight right at that swivel and you don't want, you know, a lot of swinging action to it, but you just want to hold that bait down. So I usually go, you know, a little less than a forearm. Um, I, I normally what I do is I'll just measure off the noodle. So, you know, 12 inches. By the time you tie your knot, you end up with like a nine inch, uh, nine inch dropper. So we'll just do that here real quick. We'll cut that. You guys can see that braided mason line is not fraying at all. There's no need to singe it. So we'll tie it to our other side of our swivel here. And we'll give that nice three loop knot there. Tie that in place. Like I said, guys, whenever you kind of get good at tying this knot, uh, you can tie it with like super, super minimal uh, tag ends, which, I mean, if you're into that, whatever, but you can see very minimal tag end. Okay, so come down to the hook here. Like I said, whatever, I'm not gonna say a whole lot of hooks, I'll tell you what I use, but that's about it. So I've got a, uh, this is a five aught circle hook. Now I am a firm believer in snelling hooks. If you guys don't know what that is, basically it's, it's bringing the line wrapped around the hook. So where with a circle hook application, it forces that hook to roll to the, to the, to the outside instead of the inside. Um, and I even go so far as I snell my jug line hook. So it's just very easy to snell here. We'll just run this line. And whenever you snell, you always wanna run, start at the inside where the hook bend is and work out. And with this big, this big line, I only wrap it like two or three times. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a loop, come back up that loop, pinch with our fingers, we're gonna give it a couple, three wraps, three or four wraps. With this big line, 
uh, you know you can't get crazy with it but it definitely will, will hold uh, and then we'll just run that tag in through that loop that you created and then we'll give it a nice little pull up the hook shank there and you can see what happens is you kind of make a slip knot around the shank of the hook so the tighter that the line pulls the tighter that knot will grab and you can see once you get good at it you leave very minimal tag end as well that's why i said there's about a nine or a ten inch inch dropper there and you can see by snelling that as that hook turns it has to turn to the you know the mouth of the fish basically and that's by putting that line through the inside of the hook you know you can believe it or not but i, I am a firm believer of that all right so we've got our pipe here, we've got our holes drilled, we've got our eye in, we've got everything made up. Now it comes time to glue this thing to the noodle. So as I said, you use contact cement, rubber cement, uh, like a medium or heavy body uh, PVC cement. They all work real good. You just don't want to use anything like super glue because it'll melt the noodle. So our two inch line that we marked here, that's our stopping point for our glue and that's what we're gonna wrap our line on so it just kinda of gives you a reference point so all I do is I just take some of this glue here and I am quite generous with it and I coat the entire pipe here and once that glue sets guys I'm telling you you can pull in some big fish with it um, it really bonds nicely to the to the noodle so Anyway, we've got a nice stopping point here with our line so we don't put the glue too far down. There it's coated and we'll just spin that up in to the noodle just to get that glue nice and covered around there. And you'll end up with just a nice, nice little bead there of, of glue. And you can either just kind of wipe that away or let it set up. No big deal. So we'll just wipe that away for video purposes here so we can finish this. All right. Now, if you don't believe me that this glue will hold and you want to hard fasten it, here's one, one quick way to do it. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using wire because, it number one, it's sharp on the hand whenever you grab it. And number two, if you're not using stainless wire, it will rust. Um, so I, I'll give you the alternative, use a zip tie. So if you don't, if you want to do this, just quarter inch drill bit or so and a drill, reach down, drill straight through that pipe, we'll run a zip tie right through that pipe and we will connect it here. We'll connect it to that noodle. That gives you a hard, firm fastening point, you know, in case your glue would fail. Um, but like I said, hundreds and hundreds of fish, I've only had one casualty. Trim that line off. So another option for building this, um, if you're a guy that likes to run jugs at night, is now you can take some reflective tape. So this is some reflective tape that I got. And we can dress our noodle up. with reflective tape. And there you have a super reflective jug line. Like I said, you can use this or not, um, but you know, it uh, it is definitely an option. And then it also gives you an option to write your name, you know, because here we have to have name and address on them. So uh, anyway, there's that. That's your completed ultimate jug, guys. So let me show you how it works. All right, so with the depth setting, um, you know, as I said before, with jug fishing, you really want to keep that bait, you know, 10 inches to a foot off the bottom, keep it moving, keep it, uh, you know, from dragging up leaves, and you definitely don't want it too, too awful high. So what we can do now is, because we've got that piece of pipe sticking out, we can just wind our line up on there and let's say let's say today we're going to be fishing in in four foot of water and we want to fish this thing three foot deep so we leave out three foot of line 
we just simply make a loop in that line, we pull it right through that eye, suck it down on that eye, and now that line is completely secure. It can't go anywhere, and you've got a set depth of three foot or so. And then if we say the next day we want to fish deeper water, just pull that line right off that eye. If you run, run that eye all the way down in, it can't possibly catch, so it's super easy to, to adjust on the fly. Say we want to drop it a foot or so, uh, just reset. Boom, there it is, deeper. Same thing with the weights. So um, basically I run, I run kind of two, two main weights. I run like a three eighths or a half ounce weight and then I run like a two ounce weight. Uh, so this noodle here, a 12 inch noodle, I actually just did this because I knew there would be questions on it. A 12 inch noodle takes not quite three pounds to sink this thing. So, um, you know, uh, 40, 45 ounces to be exact to make it neutrally buoyant. Uh, <laughs> I did it for you guys. But uh, anyway, so a two ounce weight will keep this thing from drifting a lot more than say like a half ounce or a three ounce or three eighths ounce weight. Uh, and if you're fishing in the summertime, say on like a flat out in the main lake where you don't want these things to move around a lot, use a heavier weight and keep them from drifting so far. So these weights here are if you, if you go to the store and buy them, they're gonna be called casting weights. Um, but it's essentially a bell sinker with a, a eye in it. And you can either buy these with like the preformed eyes in the lead, or this is what I use for spider rig, and I pour these things by the dozen. Uh, and, and they have the, the metal eye brass insert in it. So, all we need to do to make this weight adjustable is come down, and normally I run my weight just right above my swivel uh, same concept as the, the setting the depth. Just pinch that line together, run it through that eye, and then just roll it right around your weight, and you have a weight that's set on your line. There's no need to run it right down to your hook. You can if you want. This is just how I do it. There's a two ounce weight on there. Uh, say I want to change the weight out, super easy. Just pull that line right out of that eye. So let's just say we wanted to change a different weight. We'll just take that out and go smaller or, or heavier weight, and there you go. Simple, easy. And then at the end of the day, the whole package, because you've got an anchoring point up here, you just wrap that up all the way around the whole thing. Stick your hook in your noodle, and you're good to go. And you don't have to keep setting depths different. Uh, you know, it stays in one place until you reset that. So that's about it, guys. That is that is what I consider the ultimate and adjustability of jug lines. They work great. Um, super, super effective. Um, like I said, take some of the take some of the tips, tricks, whatever from this video. But uh, you know, th these things really do work. They work great. Uh, one final thing: storing these things. So. A lot of issues with storing them over the years. This is the best method I've found. This is a, a flexible clothes basket. You can get these for five, six bucks. What this, <laughs> you can put 25 of these jugs in this clothes basket. If you put one of the little twisty ties on it, they can't come out. If not, you can have your handles here. They've got air holes all the way around them so your jugs don't get mold or anything on them. And you can just transport them from boat or to the garage or anything. So they work out really, really great uh, as far as transporting stuff. So anyway, guys, here's the jug, what I consider the ultimate in adjustability. Um, these things will catch big fish, small fish, every fish in between, and it's just super, super convenient to, uh, you know, to have that adjustability. You know, you could put 30, 40, 50 feet of line on this thing if you really wanted to. Uh, you've got the room because you know, there's an, a good inch and a quarter of distance here between this eye and the noodle that you can just wrap up like a spool. So anyway, guys, that's going to kind of wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would, hit that like button. It really does help. If you're new to this channel and you like what you see, consider subscribing to it. Uh, as always, leave a comment. I love reading your guys' comments. Uh, and and also for those of you who's been around for a while and you've seen some of the stuff that I do and you would like to see a similar DIYs to this, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys would like to see and uh, 
and we'll definitely try to get that get that up for you guys. All right, guys, I appreciate all support. Till next time.